sports drinks, and actually, I <laughs> on this video, I'll be discussing sports drinks and if they actually improve your performance. So let's go. What's up, what's up, what's up everybody? My name is Mark and welcome to the channel. If it's your first time here, I would love for you to be a regular viewer on this channel. So please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. But let's get to it. This video will address sports drinks, not energy drinks. Also, I will not be detailing controversial subjects such as manufacturing processes, chemical additives, and many other issues with sports drinks, as those subjects are beyond the scope of this video. But I will be helping you assess if sports drinks are right for you, your training programs, and young athletes. Plus, in the end, I've added a short bonus that'll help performance without breaking the bank. So make sure you don't miss out on that. I'm sure most of you have had a sports drink before since the industry generates over $20 billion per year. But be honest with yourself, do you actually feel a difference? Did you become superhuman and set a bunch of records? Or did you just drink it and feel the same? As a young athlete, I consumed sports drinks before and during almost every game, but I never knew if they were helping me or not. I consumed sports drinks because the mass media and advertising was telling me that they were great. I never actually knew if the marketing power contributed to performance. And honestly, before I decided to do this video, I still didn't know the right answer. So I decided to uncover some truths about sports drinks and reveal whether people are just wasting their time and money or actually gaining a competitive advantage. So in order to understand this, we must first generally define what a sports drink is. A sports drink is a beverage with a mixture of sugar and salts promised to one, combat dehydration, two, replenish your nutrients lost during exercise, and three, keep your energy levels high during physical exertion. Okay, let's be real here. If their claims are true and sports drinks can deliver on their promises, then you would be foolish not to take it. If your competition takes it, then you have potentially put yourself at a disadvantage. To make it easier, we are going to go on a journey with a group of athletes. This group consists of Danielle and three of her closest friends. Danielle is an avid long distance runner who enjoys competing and races regularly. Her runs typically last 35 to 45 minutes. Her friend Andre loves to lift weights at the gym and gets his lift in at least three times a week. He is occasionally seen on the treadmill. Her other friend, Christine, loves to play soccer. She hasn't missed a game in years and practices consistently between events. And lastly, there's Byron, who plays football and practices at high levels of intensity. They have been told that they should start consuming sports drinks so they can improve their performance, but they are quickly confused about their options. And most importantly, they do not want to be tricked into fancy labels and marketing. So as they venture off together, seeking real answers, they begin to uncover their mystery and find that there are three different kinds of sports drinks. Hypotonic, isotonic, and hypertonic. As the friends huddle over each other, they each begin to discuss each one. They first start with an understanding of the prefixes of each type of drink. Danielle says that each type of drink is referring to the concentration of the drink relative to the human bloodstream. Byron asks, what does that mean? She further explains that a hypotonic sports drink has a lower concentration of sugars and salts than the bloodstream. An isotonic sports drink has similar concentrations of sugar and salt to the bloodstream. And lastly, hypertonic sports drinks have a higher concentration of sugar and salts relative to the human bloodstream. Andre shakes his head and then begins to explain that hypotonic drinks have the lowest amounts of salts and sugars compared to isotonic and hypertonic drinks. He says that the salts are commonly referred to as electrolytes and the sugars are labeled as carbohydrates. He continues to say that because of their lower concentration of salts and sugars, the hypotonic drinks are quickly absorbed into the body. Therefore, hypotonic drinks can hydrate the body quickly. Christine's excited about Andre's statement, but is dying to tell her friends about what she has learned about isotonic drinks. She proudly states that isotonic drinks have higher concentrations of salts and carbohydrates compared to hypotonic drinks. She says they create thirst and encourage voluntary fluid intake by increasing sodium levels in the body. She also says that these drinks are the most common brands like regular Gatorade and Powerade. At this point, the friends are getting really excited about their new discoveries. They had no idea that sports drinks can affect the body so differently. They were under the impression that they were all the same. Before they can bat an eye, Byron takes a step forward and says not to forget about hypertonic drinks. He says that hypertonic drinks have the highest amounts of sugar, but do not have a high concentration of salts. He states that the higher concentration of sugars cause the stomach to slowly release fluids into the body and help replenish depleted muscles after intense activity. The friends are now feeling great about themselves 
but they don't understand what the sugars and salts are actually doing in the drinks. So they all open their phones and begin searching again. They find that the sugars used in sports drinks absorb quickly into the body and keep energy levels high. This provides a much needed energy boost during long and intense exercise. However, they realize that they plan on not exerting themselves really hard that day, the sugars are not necessary. Then all of a sudden, aha, Danielle finds the answers about electrolytes. She explains to the group that electrolytes are minerals that help regulate nerve muscular activity, but are slowly lost when someone sweats. At that point, Christina asks Danielle if electrolytes leave the body quickly enough to need replenished when they play their sports. Danielle laughs and says that the research indicates that if you exercise for long durations and are sweating a lot, replacing electrolytes could be beneficial. But those durations are elite athletes performing continuously for at least two to three hours. The human body is actually really good at regulating electrolyte levels during exercise. She continues to say that electrolytes are not just to help with nerve and muscular activity. They also make the most of your water intake. She says by drinking a sports drink with electrolytes, the body actually retains more water after drinking to balance the body's salt levels. She says to think about it like eating a salty pizza and how it makes you thirsty. That's exactly what our electrolytes are doing to your body when you consume a sports drink. It's the thing that makes you want to drink more water. So the sports drink alone will not help keep you hydrated. Drinking water in combination with the sports drink is what's actually going to help you. At this point, Byron steps forward once more and begins to sort out the information. He says, okay, sugars are keep us energized, but electrolytes help keep us hydrated, but only when combined with water. So if we choose the sports drink, is essentially useless without water. I need to drink water with a sports drink and together they provide us with the benefits. Yes, they all shake their heads in agreement. And Andre lets the group settle for a moment and then asks the friends which drinks they're going to consume for their performance. Andre says he's just going to stick with water and a protein shake as a post-workout. After all, my gym is air conditioned. And that's where we'll leave Danielle and her friends. Which drink should her friends consume? Or should they not consume any sports drinks at all? Remember, Danielle runs long distance, Christine plays soccer, Byron plays football, and Andre is a weightlifter. If I were their coach or parent, this is where my opinions would stand. Danielle should just focus on water before and after her runs. She isn't running for extreme distances that significantly deplete her body of carbohydrates and salts, so her quick replenishment is not necessary. I think Andre made the right choice. He works out in a controlled environment and has the ability to hydrate any time. He also takes a protein shake after his workouts, so he doesn't need a hypertonic drink to replenish his muscles. He'll replace everything he lost with his protein shake and meals prior to the next workout. Christine, depending on her playing time, could benefit from drinking isotonic drinks during her games. She is potentially running for 90 minutes. Adding sugars and electrolytes can benefit her. If she were to play in a tournament with multiple games in a day, she would need to replace fluids fast. Specifically, in this tournament situation, she may also benefit from hypertonic drinks after games and hypertonic drinks before games, depending on how quickly her games were occurring. Byron most likely does not need sports drinks before games. He can use water to stay hydrated. However, during the games, because of the intensity of football, drinking an isotonic drink could be beneficial. This would keep his energy levels high by replacing lost carbohydrates and also allow him to replace more water from heavy sweating under football equipment. The more important question is, what type of drink will you and your athletes consume? Now, if you stuck with me, it's bonus time. Here's a simple recipe for an isotonic drink that's effective as what you will buy in the store and has none of the harmful stuff. All right, here it is, the homemade sports drink, the Gatorade. We're going to make 20 ounces of fluids today. So you're going to put 18 ounces of water into the cup. I'm going to remind you that the isotonic drink you're about to make is made for a concentrate, so you must mix it with water. We're going to have two ounces of lemon juice for flavor. You can choose for your own flavor. And we're going to move on to the sugar. I use 3.5 tablespoons of dextrose because dextrose is fast absorbing and it's actually the product that's used in Gatorade. And lastly, the salt, one eight teaspoon of salt to add your electrolytes, that's approximately 300 milligrams. And then we're going to cap it and mix it so all those solutes dissolve properly. And it tastes great. Here's a list of your final ingredients. I hope you learned something today. Until next time, I'll see you later.